Well, we took the carbs out in the most recent episode. Now let's continue on and get the engine out of this Honda CX500. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So welcome back everybody. Um, as we have already documented on Urban Monk TV, this CX-500 has a bad stator and a bad regulator rectifier. Uh, the regulator rectifier is easy enough to repair, but the stator is in the back of the engine. We got to take the engine out to repair that. And while we're in there, we're going to do some other uh, uh, maintenance updates, let's say. And uh, I've tested compression on this engine. It's fantastic for how many miles the clock indicates on this thing. It's almost 42,000 miles. Not that big a deal for these uh, liquid-cooled Honda engines. These things are known to run real long. I mean, they put them in the Silver Wing, which was a touring bike. Um, and so, you know, a lot of history that these things run long. Before I get going, I just wanted to thank everyone who has purchased my book or read it on Amazon Kindle uh, or just downloaded it as an ebook. Um, some of you have sent me your comments and some of you have done uh, ratings on Amazon. And I'm just really thankful to each and every one of you for checking out the book. Um, you know, it's, it's something I do for the love of it. This whole channel is not like a big money maker uh, by any means. I am rolling in tens of dollars from all of this effort, and you know, believe me, I'm spending a lot more than I'm making, a lot more. Um, and it isn't about the money. It's about the story. It's about sharing uh, motorcycle maintenance and working on vintage bikes and just the love of it and the fun of it. So. Thank you, those of you who checked out my book, uh, and if you want to check it out, it's online on my website, Urban Monk TV. Enough of that. Let's get this engine out the rest of the way. Carburetors are out. Watch the other video on how to get to that point, and let me bring you up to speed with things that I've done here as part of that carburetor uh, removal that really you know, also belong in an engine out video. So one of the first things I had to do to get the carbs out easily was take off these engine guards. Kind of a supplemental because obviously most of uh, the CX-500s out there won't have these. But I took them off and they were mounted um, here. Wait, no, sorry. They were mounted here and here and on these brackets that come down here, which I put in... A box at this point so I don't know if I have the right side here yeah so I've taken those out so other things that I've done that are part of the engine removal job but I did them in previous videos just go back and watch those I have a playlist on the CX 500 uh, remove the fuel tank first turn the fuel valve off before you do that and disconnect your fuel lines Remove the fuel tank, remove the seat and the side covers, disconnect your battery, starting with the negative terminal first, then the positive. That's just kind of basic uh, good practice. And um, drain the oil from the engine. Now, next step is tachometer cable, and I've run into a discrepancy between the reality of my situation and the service manual. The service manual says to get down in here and there is a six millimeter bolt uh, that holds that tachometer cable into the engine and I'm looking at these hard mounted radiator shrouds or essentially fan shrouds. There's no way to get around them at this stage and yet service manual is calling that the next step. I think uh, quite a bit has to be disassembled here before that can come out. But the way I see it, we can just disconnect the tachometer cable from up here 
and uh, get the whole thing loose and we'll, we'll get our engine out and take that out later. And I'm just going to fish this back. We'll just get that straight up. So that'll just come with the engine now. And then uh, when I do get things out, this would be a really good opportunity to lubricate this tack cable. And I'm just going to loosen this bypass hose from the radiator. could use replacement. Yeah, pretty brittle. Next step is to remove the breather hose on the back side of the engine, but I already did that as part of my carburetor removal, so see that video. And next we disconnect our clutch cable from this guide that's cast right into the engine case. So you need to get the cable extended quite far so you can bend it around and slide it out this back slot and that's going to take you know a lot of slack. You can't get that slack from here very easily because the whole cable wants to turn all the way up to the lever so the place to get that slack is up at the lever. Here I can loosen this, take my cable out, and then by pushing that in, I get the slack I need down at the other side. So now, with added slack here that I got from the other side, I can bend this down. It's a little tricky. And hopefully wiggle it out. Oh, my hands are not in the way. There. And it's disconnected. Now if I just pull the whole thing through here, I can hold the cable straight up and it'll thread out easily enough. And now with that cable out, this is the time to lubricate this and my recommendation would be the Motion Pro Cable Luber version 3 is what they sell now. You know, if you have one of the original version, that works great too. Uh, these are just really slick. So um, yeah, get one of these and lubricate your cables or go buy new ones and they're not cheap. So that's why this thing is so important saves you money. Next is to disconnect the thermostat wire which is this blue with the red stripe up here by the coil pack and this green wire which is for the oil pressure light and the switch. So those are loose and now let's get the coil pack loosened up. Obviously pull the spark plug caps off of the spark plug so that your coil is free and then this bracket has this bolt at the top that holds that whole coil pack in there. Pretty slick design. Next step would be to remove these hangers. Uh, I mentioned earlier I already did that. So get these loose on both sides and take out these two hanger brackets. Next, remove the mufflers. Uh, Here's where the bolts are. These two guys are pretty obvious, and then one back here. Those three. Or just remove this bolt on and this foot peg, and that whole bracket will come with the muffler. You know, one bolt that you have beautiful access to. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's a lot of work, you know, 42,000 miles and 40 years of rust, 39 years. Okay, I want to mention this here. Now that I've uh, looked at this closer, taking out that top foot rest bolt is the preferred method because if you leave that in, even if you do get these two bolts out, then your muffler bolts are still going through these holes. Then you're trying to wiggle the muffler to get it loose from all of the rust where it comes into that uh, what they call the power chamber but your two bolts are still in this and this is still rigid and that doesn't allow you to wiggle the muffler as much as you need to to break that loose so in hindsight definitely just take this bolt out and remove the whole bracket it's a much easier proposition and then on the uh, head here, a uh, six point socket is preferred, and I put a little, uh, I use PB blaster, you could use WD 40, whatever kind of penetrating oil you prefer to use. Again, exhaust, it's tough. When they made the service manuals, they weren't thinking 40 years later. So I'm completely loose here, but just rusted together inside of this. Um, flange and uh, that fitting and one might be tempted to try to remove this stud so that you could rotate this out and thus put a torsion or twisting force into that and loosen up all that rust if you've got a solid stud here that you're not having problems with and all of these bikes are nearly 40 years old at this point I really don't recommend trying to get that out. Leave it. And just keep working an up and down force while pulling. It's I'm making some headway, believe it or not. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship. And how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on UrbanMonkTV.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. Well, I'm out of breath and taking a break. I'm also sweating, but you can see I'm clearly making progress as that was about an inch inside there. So we just gotta keep going. Ooh. It's always satisfying and then just repeat on the other side. Service manual doesn't call for it, but I'm gonna take the foot pegs off because I wanna get that power chamber out and cleaned up, and I wanna clean all of this up, and I see a little rust around the frame. So, again, not really part of engine removal and according to the service manual, I'm just doing it. Eight millimeter hex, or Allen. Next step, once a guy has the exhaust components off, uh, you got to loosen up this power chamber. Still think that's a funny name. And um, take this bolt off and these two. Am I pointing in the right spot? Yeah, here and same there. So hard for me to film this, but just know that those are the three I'm taking off. With this front one, I can only get a box end wrench on it. 
So I did spray a little penetrating oil on that first. The rear two you can get at with a extension and 12 point, uh, sorry, an extension and a 12 millimeter socket. And there's not a, the nut is welded on the back of the, the piece. So it's just the bolt coming out. There we go. So two bolts, 12 millimeter, and the one bolt and nut on the front. And I didn't get it on camera, but it dropped right out of the bottom real easy. So just pull that piece out. So now we pretty much have an engine hanging here in the frame uh, by three points. Here, here, used to be up here, and then uh, this guy. This was not necessary for engine removal. The radiator comes with it. Now next, uh, we do have some electrical components still hooked up to the engine. These three wires I mentioned in a previous video uh, are coming up from the uh, stator, which is bad in this engine. We're going to replace that. This is the CDI box. That too has wires going down to the engine. And what is this? I forget. It's also part of the CDI. So get these three disconnected and pull this harness here, plus all of these wire wraps that are connecting this harness to the engine, because this piece is going to come with it. Another look at that from the other side. These three, and then this harness goes down to the engine. So that, that piece has got to be loosened up. cables and these funky wire ties. These are actually pretty cool. They're aluminum. Don't bend them too many times. The metal fatigue will wear them out. You can replace with zip ties if you have to. And then with those three disconnected there is one other wire that comes out of this harness. Winds up here. There we go. I am going to note that that is a green and red. We'll just put a little piece of tape. Well, never mind. I see the green and red continues there, so I don't need a reminder. Interesting. There we go. All right. Completely free there. You want to disconnect the starter cable. It's easy enough to do. Just a 10 millimeter nut. It's a tight space, but you can lose your nut on the inside and get it later like I did and then <laughs> take the cable off. So we'll get at my lost nut later. You guys see anything else that's connected to the engine? How about this drive shaft? We got to get in here. Try to be kind. To your rubber here. I find it still pretty pliable, which is nice. Okay. Inside here, where 40 years of dust have not gotten, which is fantastic, there is a lock nut right there. We got to get that loosened up. So, loosen that up. That looks 12 millimeter to me. See if I can do this. And that needs to come completely out, not just loosened. And then we can pull back the shaft. And it's hard for me to hold this back and film, but that is why you have to remove the bolt, because just loosening it, it's still going to ride in that channel on the shaft and it won't come off. So you got to take that lock bolt completely out. The next step is going to be to place a jack under the engine. I recommend a floor jack. Um, it's got to fit. Essentially I want to get my, my jack right under here. That's about right. There. 
So with the jack supporting the engine, then the next step is to remove the engine mounting bolts in the rear, which is actually three bolts, one here, one just like it on the other side, up top, and then this is one single bolt running all the way through. These are two shorter. I already had these top loose because I had the engine guards on here and uh, removed those earlier as I mentioned. I found the nut on this bottom one to be so tight that uh, one, I'm using a six point socket and two, I'm using a long breaker bar. It just got pretty dry. Just make sure you've got your jack holding your engine now as you take these out. Okay, got that nut off. And then just be gentle with your threads as you try pushing that through. I may get a drift, but if I can grab it on the other side now, I'll just pull it through. Just checking my jack. Make sure I'm holding it. It's still mounted up here in the front, so it shouldn't really go crazy here. Yeah, I'm out. Whoa. That's some bright sun. Um, I think now is a good time to consider where you're going to put the engine once you have it out, because we're soon going to have it balancing on a jack kind of precariously and that's not where we want to leave it long term. So at this point I've brought in uh, a workbench that I built just for working on motorcycle engines. Uh, but you know you could put it on your workbench, you could put it wherever you're going to work on the engine, but think about it. This is a good time to think about it and get ready. Next is these two top hanger bolts. Again, they're pretty tight, so I've got a breaker bar. Oh, I'm spinning it. There we go. tension on that one. That's the last bolt holding the engine in. So I had the camera off, I'm sorry, but I just gave the jack one little tiny pump to release the pressure on this bolt. Maybe one more. There we go. And there, that engine is hanging, sorry, it's not hanging, it's resting on the jack. And so now I'm going to try to bring the engine down and forward while disconnecting this U-joint here, but you know, I'm already pretty much clear of it because I pushed it back in the shaft. So I don't think this is going to be that big a deal. I'm going to go slow in case I've still got a line or something connected here, but I don't think so. I'm just going to slowly drop this one little bit and see what happens. clearing the U-joint, so I think I can just come straight down. What I don't know is if I'm balanced on here. Once I clear the frame, I don't want this to fall that way. Just take it slow. Well, 
It didn't fall that way. How about that? It falls forward. That's pretty good, actually. Okay. I've just gone around now that things are tilted out and took one last look to make sure I am completely disconnected everywhere. And I'm just holding the engine in balance with uh, one hand as I loosen the jack. And I'm just balancing it. And it is out of the motorcycle right now and slowly coming down. I'm just going to maintain control and try not to scratch the chrome on my front fender here. I'm going to just try to manhandle that thing out and put it on the table. It's not too bad. Okay, I got it out of there, and uh, have your, I mean, once you get it on the jack, be ready to put it somewhere. Um, this worked out great. You know, it wasn't so incredibly heavy. I guess the official recommendation should be that you have a friend to do this with you. Um, I don't want somebody injuring their back. It's not light, but you can do it. Well, I did it. How about that? and um, get it on the table, the engine is out. Yes, the radiator comes out with it, fully filled with the uh, coolant. Now that we have the engine out, I want to show, before I did drop the engine, you know, this thing does slide back and forth some. I pushed that all the way back. One last thing I like to do is put bolts and nuts back onto the frame or the bike or the engine, where they go. This is truly the easiest time to remember this stuff. We'll get these cleaned up later, but like in this case, it's nice to remember where all of this stuff goes. Now, that sits like that. Now I won't forget. And that is how we get the Honda CX500 engine out of the motorcycle so that we can work on it. Hey, stay tuned to this channel. In the future we are going to be replacing the stator in this engine and probably the uh, water pump seal. And we'll see if I need to do anything with cam chain tensioner uh, these bikes do have a reputation of having some bad cam chain tensioners in them, but that was earlier models. This thing's a pretty late model, 1981. Pretty sure they had it figured out by then, but uh, I'll take a look at it while we got it apart. Um, I don't know if we're going to take the radiator off or not yet. Uh, we'll get to that. And, well, we are going to drain the coolant, so we'll see. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to be notified of future videos on the CX-500. Check out my build series on the Suzuki GS550 Cafe Racer that I affectionately named Mr. Corton. Check out my book, Creating Mr. Corton, a memoir of the build of a cafe racer and uh, of becoming a motorcyclist in Fargo, North Dakota and buying a CX500 as a teen. And then I also on this channel have uh, videos of V-Strom, Suzuki V-Strom maintenance. Thanks for watching.